All right, thanks for tuning in once again. Prime Sports NASCAR, a couple of shows this week. You would think it's, well, we have two races, uh, but that's not the reason. Uh, we spent we went over time on Bubba Wallace talk. So uh, now we're going to talk about on uh, the track racing at NASCAR. First, guys, let's talk about Ryan Blaney uh, hanging on. And uh, how, I mean, it doesn't happen often, CJ, where you 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 get a a driver that you know is clearly the best uh car has clearly the best car at, at one of these tracks like Talladega and he's at the front all all race and then he actually holds on and win wins that happens a few times it doesn't happen very often <laughs> And, and we saw it's the almost reason. Almost never. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we've seen, you know, Brad Kozlowski and, and other drivers sure. that have just, wow. I mean, they just dominated and won those races. So Blaney, and yet still, what it took for him to find a way to, to get to the lead on that last lap and then to play bumper cars and to hold on to that car as he was able to get past the finish line and uh, squeak out a win over, over Ricky Senos Jr. Uh, shows uh, a lot of maturity on Ryan Blaney. It was a fantastic, fantastic performance. You know, he should have won the stage. Ricky Stenhouse beat him to the stage, and then you come down, and it's those two guys on the last lap coming off of the last turn, and they're getting challenged by Hamlin, uh, Almarola, um, Eric Jones, etc., and and then you got your third place car sliding across the field. <laughs> yeah. um, I was I was really impressed with Blaney all day, and not just because of the move at the finish, but like you said, he was getting some really hard hits from Logano and Keselowski the entire time, and they were not nice nudges. They were pushing hard, and they had to scrap for every single inch that they got. And he was squirrely as as he got those bumps, and he just said, "Keep." keep it coming, keep it coming. And they were ultra aggressive all day. Um, and they didn't crash. It was, it was absolutely unbelievable. It was uh, a greedy finish. And yeah, he had the fastest car aside from maybe a Kyle Bush, but I, I think Kyle Bush, uh, was the fastest car by itself, but he never had friends to, to really no. help him. And, and, and Blaney didn't even, it wasn't like Blaney had Kozlowski and Lagana to push right. him to victory circle. Correct. You yeah. know, so he did it on his own with the help of Almarola and Stenhouse there late, a uh, lot to kind of go over there. I, I am going to say, I have never seen, uh, look, I, I, I got to be honest here because that's, I always, always going to be honest, but, and I've, I've gotten screwed before by my technology. And sometimes it's not, most of the time it's been NASCAR's fault, but when it's my fault, that has to do with weather. It's, it's usually, <laughs> it's, 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 it's always a weather race too, it seems. But mm -hmm. I, because the race, Again, was it was just a, in a weird channel, and it, it, you had you had to decide. And I'm, I'm uh, by the way, I, if, looking back at my weather situation, so I had like a 30 minute rainstorm at my house, and I have Direct TV. And when that happens, everything kind of you lose the time on the race. So yep. the race goes over. I'm looking at the schedule, and I go, okay, this is supposed to end in four and a half hours. I did it an hour and a half longer. Then I went ahead, and I, I looked at whatever was on deck. I, I started the recording on that show and ran it for another three hours, and, uh, and that's it. And then I, I woke up in the morning. I put on the last um, uh, hour of the race, and at four o'clock, at the four-hour mark on my four and a half hours of recording, it stops. Oh. I go, why did this stop? <laughs> and I looked at the, at the, the seven thirty thing I record and I go, this better have picked up at my seven thirty. So I turn on immediately the seven thirty thing. And the first thing I see is Bubba Wallace's interview. And I'm oh. going, Holy <laughs> shit. Did he win? <laughs> and he's got this big smile on his face and he's being, I'm like, Oh my God, I just missed Bubba Wallace winning. And so, uh, First thing I do then is I go, okay, I still didn't know who had, who had won though. So I turn on YouTube and I type it in and I went into the YouTube to do it. And as I was going into YouTube, um, I, I could see Ryan Blaney's car there. And I was like, well, that's interesting. They had a four. I don't know if they, have, you've seen this already, guys. I've never seen this before, but they had four and a half hours, the entire length of the time of the race on TV inside ryan blaney's car on youtube oh, yes really? they do that yeah. i had never wow. seen that before 
and it was really Pretty weird. Cool. It, so I get, yeah. so I figured, all right, well, let me go into Ryan Blaney's car and see how this goes. But you can't figure, you see yeah, you can't figure anything out when you're inside the car. Now, I, I had no, no idea if he was winning or leading or whatever. And I go, this isn't any good. So I, I had to go to another thing, and then that's when I, you know, uh, saw what happened with Blaney on. They had one of those 12 minute highlight things. But yeah, I got screwed out of like feeling the emotions of Blaney winning the race. But yeah, it, it was incredible with uh, how he was able to pull that out. Also at the end. Because he had the same situation, not same situation, but he had a similar situation in Daytona, Eric, and it didn't go his way. And Denny Hamlin, you know, got the benefit of the doubt there. Um, but I thought what was interesting is by me watching Ryan Blaney in the car, and I went back and watched, you know, the end with him in the car. I mean, the, the, there's like no, there's, you couldn't even tell what he was, if anything happened. He's got no emotions yeah. whatsoever. I'm like, I couldn't even, he wasn't like, you know, his fists weren't being pumped. He wasn't screaming or yelling. You know, he didn't pull down anything by his, by the window and start, you know, putting his fists out. I couldn't tell what the hell was going on. Around. Is that normal for a driver to have those kinds of non-emotions like <laughs> Ryan Blaney? No. And he talked about that on his zoom uh, press conference that we had that he, he was more subdued than he normally would. Um, he says a weird situation. First, he just couldn't seem to close out races. And here he finally closed out a race in the most unpredictable race of the year. And he wins. He should be happy. But he said he felt, one, bad for Bubba because of what was going on. Um, he was up late with Bubba the night before crying just because Bubba's his best friend. And he said that that whole aspect, he was just mentally drained. And two, he didn't mean to wreck uh, Eric Jones. And he looked in his rear view and saw the, the big wreck. He just didn't know how bad it was. And he said he immediately felt bad. He hates to win races that way. And he said, I did not mean to wreck them. That's how you win um, races at Talladega. That's how you have to. So he feeling bad, exhausted, um, worried about his friend, seeing a car wreck. He just, that was the reason he was so subdued. Um, or he would have been. He's usually a pretty happy guy. Um, but I did think it was ironic that it is, and he talked about that, how he's just been so close all year, a top four car, and here he finally wins, and it's a track like Talladega or, or Daytona, the runs that you really have no prediction how that thing's going to end, and he finally wins one. So I think this will propel him. I feel like this is like we talked about last week, like yep. I wouldn't, like CJ, I wouldn't trade him because this That's is. Right. We, Granted, it was a super speedway, but I, I wouldn't be shocked to see him top five car at Pocono both races and just ride into the sunset, which um, which I'm sure we'll talk about. I almost feel like it's so straight disrespectful to him that he's 12 to 1 for a championship. I know. Odds. It's Isn't like, really? Crazy? The hottest driver is 12 to 1? Take it, baby. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think right now, if I had to say a championship favorite who's starting to stand out above people, it's him. Now that he's got his win. And by the way, the, the only thing that I would do or one of the main things I do on that YouTube thing is is at least like in the last five laps or something, have a way that we can actually understand what's going on in the race. You know, because yeah. I think that's a cool way, obviously, of watching. But you can't watch that as the race is going on. You have to watch it after the race because yeah. then you won't know what's You'd going no on in the race. No, <laughs> you would have literally no idea what's going on. And, but, and, and I do. And I, and I think they should keep it primarily on what Ryan Blaney is seeing. I don't mind some of the backward stuff, you know, what's going on mm -hmm. behind him sometimes, but I want to know what always at all times what Ryan Blaney is watching. What is he looking at? Because because then if we're luck, we're in that situation, maybe we could determine whether or not he's going to be close to winning a race or not if we don't see any other cars ahead of him. Yeah, you know, <laughs> nobody there. <laughs> so I guess he's Nothing got a blue sky and clear air. Yeah. There he goes. <laughs> and by the way, where did Eric Jones come from? I thought oh, he went. Yep. I thought he went to go get gas like five laps prior. He did. He did. He just, him and Hamlin, they hooked up because Hamlin went, uh, got fuel too. And they just, that just shows you how you get the right lane and just hook up. And it's amazing where you'll, you'll go. But that wreck too, coincidentally enough with Jones wrecking slowed some people up that were coming behind that had a better run. So it's kind of salvaged the top five for him. It probably hurt a top five. Hey, finish. well, he uh, needed it. Hey, it's a top five finish. He yeah, needed it. He definitely and, uh, needed it. And Good he's now coming week. to a track. And by the way, yeah. this is um, uh, this is uh, one of your top picks, Eric. Uh, and why not? And you're the only one that took Eric Jones this week, which was kind of surprising that uh, 
I didn't take him and TJ didn't take him considering he has five top tens and six races, four top fives runner up last July. Uh, he was on the pole in his one Xfinity race and finished second in 2016. This is his best track. Uh, and he's coming off, uh, you know, his best finish in a while. Um, but I don't know about you, CJ. I just, you know, it's Talladega. That's a little different. So I just need to see. He just hasn't looked good enough for me yet. Uh, but you decided to put him as one of your top picks, Eric. Yeah, I yeah, I just because you look at this racing package, it's a similar one to last year, and he finished third and second in the two races. He's okay. he's got some momentum. He needs the win. I mean, he's still outside looking in. I think like by a couple points. Yeah, by in the playoffs. Point. Uh, yeah, so that's right there. So the only thing going against him for this race is it's going to be the blind draw. Um, we'll see where he starts. Um, we know he's not going to be in the top 12 and we know, um, checking my notes here that it looks like four of the last five winners have been from the top 10 starting spot. Yeah. Um, 10 of the last, last 12, 12 have been yeah. in the top 10. Pocono's a hard track to pass on and he does, he's not going to have the clean air and I, he's a little tough just because he can't gamble a whole lot because of the situation he's in and the points he needs to get on the good side. But then again, this is his best shot at a win. Yeah, so but you I know what? Like Gain momentum on Saturday and then maybe go out and win Sunday. the race on Sunday. Yep, I agree. And his teammate, Kyle Busch, um, he kind of said the similar thing that even though he hasn't won yet this year, he'll see how good of his car is. And if he's not vying for a top five, and I remember I talked about this at Charlotte, yep. um, he's going to fade. He said he he will go back because he wants a good starting spot for Sunday. There he said, go. if I'm not in the top five, then I know that I've got to get I've got to position myself um, to be around on Sunday. That'll be if, funny. So, We're watching like five drivers like nobody going backwards, yeah. <laughs> trying to position yep. themselves for for a starting position. But we all have Kyle. Uh, yes. Not that we put a lot of money on Kyle. We basically okay if he wins, he kind of gets our money back kind of deal. Um, but he, he should earn our respect, uh, CJ, that we all get him because he's been phenomenal here lately. Yeah, he's been exceptionally good. And then similar for um, Jones, you know, they, they've been at good tracks for both of them this season. They just haven't had the power. They haven't been able to, to bring it forward uh, to be able to, to do it. So I'm higher on both of them for Sunday than I would be for Saturday. <clears throat> but Kyle... Given his recent statistics here, you you, you kind of have to at least go with the break even on him. I mean, winning three out of the last five races and then the uh, last seven or so have been all top 10 finishes. So um, it's not like he's been uncompetitive. He's been up there in the top five. Things fall his direction. He's going to be able to, to get a win. Uh, but I think the real danger from both of these guys comes on Sunday. And I'd be surprised if they weren't in my selections for Sunday, just because they're going to have the knowledge from Saturday. They're going to have the ability to give some feedback to their crew, set up that car a little bit differently, more towards their uh, liking and leverage that as practice, which we know that's what's been causing them to struggle so far this year. Yeah, and, 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 and exactly. And maybe that's, that's going to be the one benefit we're going to see on Sunday are these, uh, mm -hmm. these uh, older drivers that have struggled a little bit like Kyle, uh, these championship drivers uh, will have an advantage for the first time on Sunday. Um, and by the way, Kyle has led uh, 62.3 uh, laps per race over his last six at Pocono. Uh, that is some, uh, that does, and he was 0 for 25 at Pocono to start his career. He's mm -hmm. won now three of the last five races. I'm going to quickly go through these drivers uh, since we have about five minutes to go. So let's do that. Um, I'm the only one who took Harvick, Eric, uh, because he's even though he's never won here in 38 races, he led 62 laps in the pole in July, nine top tens in his last 11, seven top fives and four runner ups. So if I, I'm trying to get my money back, basically with Harvick, uh, he's seven to one. And that's not bad considering Kyle's four to one. Yeah, Harvick scared me a little bit, I think. Yes, he's got a lot of those runner-ups, but I just don't like the way his car looks right now. I mean, he's got one top five in his last six, um, and that was that one in Atlanta. And you look at this racing package last year. At Pocono, he was 22nd and 6th in his two races. So I'm not a big um, Harvick guy this week, and that's why I spent my break even on Kyle, just because I feel more comfortable with Kyle than Harvick. Yes, Kyle, or uh, Harvick may have good clean air. I mean, he can even draw the pole. Um, but... You also got to look at Ford and Pocono for whatever reason. This hasn't wow. translated well. 
lately. I mean, ever since uh, 2011, there's only been two Ford wins, and one was by a fluke win by Front Row Motorsports with Chris Buescher, yeah. and the other by the Wood Brothers. Um, Almost, I mean, and, so I and just, Chevy only one win in the last nine. Yep. And I feel like the drivers kept saying how Chevy's improved their game um, in yes. the offseason with the speed and the car. I would look for Chevy to – Game yeah, but don't you think this is why this is going to be interesting? Because Chevy and Ford yep. have, have, have really done well this year, especially Chevy. But, you know, Ford has had their, their, their moments, obviously, with five wins. And then Toyota has been the one that struggled, but they've dominated this racetrack lately. This will speak volumes, I think, for Toyota. Because this is one that, like, like Bristol and Martinsville and those places where Toyota dominated last year, it's a new package. It's a... Uh, Short track package is different this year compared to last. The mile and a half, so I thought they've just been all right. You could tell Chevy's gain has kind of taken those spots away. But Pocono hasn't changed. Pocono is the same package. Nothing's changed. will show up. So if Toyota lacks and Ford and Chevy kind of seem to catch them or pass them, then I would say, yes, hit the panic button. Just like we talked about last week with Toyota, um, I, I would be all in if, if – I'll say this, between these two races and Indy next week, if Toyota doesn't win at least one of those, I think it's time to panic for them. Um, All right, quickly with CJ, and and then I'm going to let you go, CJ. Uh, You're the only one who took Truex. Why? Uh, Toyota. I I think, as Eric said, this is a a big weekend for them. I think they've got to step it up. Um, It's been their track. They've dominated there. Uh, If you look across the Toyota drivers, you know, Truex has been pretty consistent aside from Hamlin. I I put Hamlin up there first and then Truex and then probably Bush and and Jones have had bigger struggles. So looking at that bunch, trying to get your money back with Bush, uh, put some money on Truex, put some money on, on Hamlin as well. I think both of those guys are good bets. And Truex third here last fall, the only reason he dropped out or only reason he had a bad finish in the spring race was uh, an engine failure. So I think he's going to be top five. Okay. Uh, You and I, CJ, are simpatico on Denny Hamlin and Ryan Blaney. We both like uh, those two drivers (laughs) a lot this week. Yep. Hamlin, fantastic. Won the fall race uh, from ninth position, led 32 uh, laps. He was sixth in in the spring race. Uh, Four top tens on Five finishes and Blaney. I mean, Blaney, it doesn't matter what track you go to this year. Um, he, he's strong and he's got a win here. Four top tens out of eight career starts in the poll. Uh, he's led 21 laps. No reason he can't go back to back at this point. I think like Eric said at the beginning, now that he's got that win under his belt, he's a championship contender. I think we're going to see a number of races that he wins over the short term here. And uh, who's your top long shot? Uh, that's a good question. There aren't that many good um, long shots at this racetrack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you didn't really uh, have maybe, one, did you? No, no, I didn't. Uh, but I would, I would think probably somebody in the Chevrolet ranks. I don't know, maybe William Byron, um, somebody like that, somebody who's picked up a little, little bit of pace. I think Byron's probably uh, best in that category. Three top tens and a top five out of four career starts. Okay. So, um, is it likely that he's going to come out and win? Probably not. I think it's going to be a Toyota or a Ford. Um, but uh, I put a few bucks on Byron. Long shots. Uh, yep, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. All right, and uh, Rotowire, what are you going to be doing uh, for the two races this weekend? We will have previews up. I don't know if there's going to be enough time to do a review in between the two, but we'll get a preview up for sure, and then we might have we might consolidate the review down into just one capping off the weekend because it's just, you, what, you got 12 hours in between the two races. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we don't have any rain. Uh, we get them off. Oh, yeah, no we'll rain, please. Review. We'll have the review up 24 hours afterwards on uh, Rotowire. Thanks, CJ. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks for having me. All right. So uh, let's go back to some of these other drivers uh, because, again, uh, Truex, I understand where CJ's going uh, with uh, Toyota, um, but he hasn't led a lap in his last three races. And after the win, he hasn't done anything in a couple of races. He does have two wins since 2015. I'm just still not sold completely on Truex unless he goes to a track where he has dominated before. Yeah, I, I think I agree with CJ. I think he's a good top five guy this week. But yeah, I just compared the, to Kyle and Denny um, um, and Jones and he throw in these Chevy guys up there. I feel like a good solid top five would be good for him. Okay. He's he's proven that, uh, especially in this package, he doesn't like starting in the back and trying to make his way forward. It seems like that's when mistakes come from those guys. He can't afford um, 
I don't think he can afford to run bad, get a good starting spot on Sunday, but not have the setup. I feel like he needs to find the setup, more use practice or Saturday as a practice session for Sunday and position position himself there. That's why I'm not real sold on a uh, on a true X one this weekend. Uh, let's talk about Hendricks uh, now. TJ and I went with Chase Elliott. As I mentioned, I did put a little bit on Byron, uh, but nobody took Bowman or Jimmy at 25 to 1. Uh, Bowman uh, is 20 to 1. And as CJ mentioned, he does have three top 10s in four races, and one is the top uh, five in the Cup Series. He's also, uh, what, six top 12s in his last eight races. Uh, this year so he's starting to pick up a little bit of momentum i think that momentum continues this weekend and maybe if he puts out a big effort top five on saturday then maybe he becomes a really good play on sunday yeah it depends on how saturday goes the thing with bowman um i put him kind of there with legato right now they started off really good and then they get to the we got to the COVID 19 break we come out of that break and they just have been quiet i mean they've They've been getting top tens that for, for whatever they're quiet, reason. They're yeah. Not get, yeah, they're not getting top fives. Bowman hasn't had a top five uh, finish since his runner-up in the first race back. Uh, and he only has one so. top five in eight races at Pocono, and he's never led a lap, which is why I would definitely take Byron over Bowman. Yeah, I think this is a good play uh, for Byron this weekend. Um, Jimmy Johnson, he's got one, yeah, one top five since 2013 um, at Pocono. He's... He's kind of slipping back again. It seems like, especially if we're going to do these starting lineups based off the top like top 12 owner points, we're never going to start there. Him and Alma Roller are starting to get right, and Boyer, right in that, those three going for that 12th spot. I, I, Jimmy can't take a lot of risk. I think he just needs to stay there and get his car back dialed in. I just don't like the way they're running lately. He hasn't had a top five since Bristol. Um, he might have so finished, I, he might have finished uh, the race on Sunday well. I mean, Monday, uh, yeah. and I, I I was looking at the replays, and to me, look, on some of these, I was trying to think the Elliott one, I believe it was, that was just completely, there's nothing, I forget who it was that, I think somebody pushed Kozlowski or something. Kozlowski, but, yeah. But the way that it was, uh, I, I forget which driver was trying to move this way. I, again, I can't totally remember what Harvick happened. Harvick got into Johnson. Uh, well, Harvick got into the Johnson. That was Harvick's fault. Yes. The Johnson Elliott situation that. was just a Talladega wreck and you couldn't blame yeah. anybody, but Super I don't, yeah, racing. but I don't know what Harvick was doing it. I, that was, you know, I, I don't, I don't blame the fact that he was getting pushed. No, no, I don't either. And he was there. It's just, it's Talladega. I don't put a lot of stock other than like, if you were hot coming in and hot coming out, just you keep that momentum. But if, if the momentum was halted there, I still don't put a lot of stock to this Talladega. Anything can happen. I think Chase Elliott could pick up. Yeah. But, Why didn't you take um, Chase Elliott this week? I put more faith in the Toyotas. I, I feel like I frankly just ran out of money because I wanted I wanted to throw some Almirola's way. He's got two straight top fives um, on the season. He was 10th in this race last year. He's got three top 12s in his last four uh, Pocono tries. Um, Jones, I felt good about. I just, Hamlin and uh, Bush and just, I just frankly ran out of money with Blaney. Uh, so I think Chase will be there. Chase, to me, will probably lead the Chevrolet camp, um, unless Byron sneaks his way in there. But I, I do think he's a very solid play uh, for both days. Yeah, he's what he's got six top tens and eight races, two top fives. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned with, he's only led 16 laps in his last seven. But as we've said a lot of times, especially with these younger drivers, it's really more about how they're doing now. And yep. Chase Elliott is still on top of his game. Um, and eight to one is a pretty good number. Uh, you also took Hamlin along with uh, CJ and I, and uh, but you did not take Blaney. Uh, that was a uh, I was surprised. I don't know if that's just because you know it's hard to win back to back. But Hamlin, yeah, uh, again he he looked good on Monday. Uh, yep. So even at Talladega, when things can go crazy, uh, Hamlin showed up, and this is a good track for Hamlin. He won his first two races here of his career, which is very hard to do. And then he came back in July and finally won for the first time since those <laughs> first two races. Uh, and he's uh, again, he's getting good odds at eight to one. I mean, Denny Hamlin should be getting five to one odds, not eight to one. Yeah, because I feel like if Denny Hamlin's name was Kyle Busch during yes. this, he'd be three to one right now. Yes. I mean, he's got 
he's got three top fives in his last four on the season. I mean, you go all the way back uh, to Darlington. When this whole thing ended, Denny Hamlin's got five top fives, six top fives. And one, the only ones he didn't finish the top five in was Bristol when he wrecked while leading with 11 to go. So he was there. The Coke 600 when the ballast fell off of his car. That's not his <laughs> yeah. fault. And then Martinsville, they just missed the setup. So I feel like he's driving – him and Blaney right now, I would say, are driving two of the better – I'd say two of your top championship contenders out of anybody. And you are you can get him an eight to one this week. And he's a five-time Pocono winner. Why not? Um, I feel like he's he's got the speed. He's got three wins. Like, look, he can – he doesn't have to worry about where he starts Sunday. He can go out and swing for the fences – to me, what I would do if I was them Saturday, which they've proven they would do this, is I would pitch strategize myself. Maybe gamble on fuel, where if you run out, who cares? You're going to start up front on Sunday. Or if it pays off, you win, and you get five more playoff points. Um, by having three wins in his pocket right now, he can play around a little bit, which that's scary to give a guy with these th- – running this well on a track that he runs so well on, gamble and wiggle room. So, yeah, I – for eight to one, that's why I went more him than Blaney. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked if Blaney, plus the Ford aspect, I want to see what they can do Saturday yeah, first. Sure. Um, if they prove that they could stay there up front, then yes, I'd probably go Blaney a little bit more on Sunday. But right now, the trust factor, I just got to trust the Toyotas for right now. Well, you know, maybe it helps Blaney. We we talk about how hard it is, especially for younger drivers to win back to back. Maybe it helped mm-hmm. Blaney that he didn't have a whole lot of emotion in the win at Talladega. So you, that's you, that's usually why it's hard to win back to back. Cause you get all these emotions. It's, oh, it's yep. something that you don't normally do. And then there's a whole other, there's a whole bunch of other distractions that week because you won. Uh, but maybe that's not going to be an issue for Ryan Blaney because he was calm mm-hmm. and cool after the win. Uh, and he's been 12th or better in seven of eight races at Pocono. He kind of stole the 2017 uh, win, but that's okay. A win at this track is also a very good measuring stick for Blaney coming in this weekend. And if he doesn't do anything but hit the top 10 on Saturday, then I'd go right back strong probably as long as the Fords did well in general uh, with him on uh, Sunday. Because if he finishes eighth and the Fords represented well on Saturday – then he's going to get another 10 to one or 12 to one on Sunday. Yep. And then I'd go stronger on Blaney on Sunday. Yeah. Th- this will show a lot for Sunday. I think a lot of people are, are going to look, which is good for us because NASCAR betting and, and uh, it hasn't really gotten full mainstream yet. And I feel like some of these odds makers, I, sometimes I just don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> yeah. I just, I feel like they're probably going to take the top five from Saturday and maybe lay better odds or th- they might have, five to one, four to one odds on Sunday, but they're going to ignore the fact that track position's key. And you may get some of these guys like a Blaney or a Kyle Busch or a Hamlin that may run well, but not finish. Well, you could steal one of those at 12 to one, 14 to one, yep. something like that. Um, Kurt Busch is one that I would definitely watch uh, for Saturday. Yeah, um, you were the only I mean, one that took him for Saturday's race. He's got nine top tens this year. It's the it's mm-hmm. quietest nine top tens uh, that I've seen. Uh, but he's only led 11 laps in the last seven races at Pocono. Um, but this is a good track for Kurt. He's got three career wins here. And again, he's got, a lot of, he's got a lot of momentum as far as his confidence in the top 10. He has to start leading some laps, though. Yeah, that's his thing. But it's, he's got six top tens in his last seven starts on the year. Uh, 10 top 10s in his last 17 at Pocono, seven of those being top fives. Um, we know he's in the top 10 in points, or he's, he's definitely, or I'm sorry, top 12 in points. So he's going to start up there. Does he get the luck of the draw to where he's even starting farther up, yeah. maybe the top couple of reps? That would be very beneficial, um, yes. For these odds, because he's, again, he's a guy that he doesn't have a win yet, so he might finish in the top 10 but show something now for Sunday. He's a technical guy. He's good at setups. He's going to know maybe how to dial the car in even better for Sunday. So plus he's Kyle's brother. And and speaking of Kyle, again, with the, with the disrespect almost to Hamlin, if we look at the last two weeks from what Kyle has said about Denny last week, uh, heading in in his release uh, to Talladega, he said the reason he hasn't been as good lately, but getting better on super speedways um, as it's gone on is he's watched Denny Hamlin. He says Denny's a master. He's the guy that he's learned a lot wow. from. 
And now here we are going to Pocono, and he has credited Denny Hamlin for turning his Pocono success around. Yeah, I mean, he had one top five uh, since 2011 yeah. prior to this stream. And now he's on this this big rejuvenation, I guess, the lack of a better word, at Pocono, because he started off good, went bad, and he's back good again. He said that's because of Denny Hamlin. He studied what Denny Hamlin did at Pocono, what made him so and good. who would have so, thought that he would be a good teammate? Yeah, who would have thought? It's, and here they are. Hamlin and, uh, and Hamlin's leading this charge to bring these guys up. Um, so Kyle's given him a lot of credit. It's just funny that for whatever reason, I don't know why, I just maybe because he's just not that household name like a Kyle is. Maybe he's not as controversial as he needs. I don't well, know. I don't think there's any, but, any doubt that the odds – it's it's like football. It's and and any or or like Tiger Woods in golf. It there's name recognition in NASCAR, and it's, yeah. it's like Notre Dame in college football. You know you're going to get, and it's not because of anything else other than the fans, because the fans are going to put more money on these specific drivers because of who they are, and they yep. sway the numbers. So I think it's I think I think the Vegas when they put these numbers together. I think it's not necessarily because they believe that that's where they should be, but it's because what they think the 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 betting public, uh, how they're going to handle these drivers, and uh, you know they want to see, like with, with Kyle especially, you know uh, he's got such he's still for somebody that doesn't have a win this year to be sitting there at four to one, uh, I even though he's been so dominant. Just shows you though how much wagering respect he has. Yeah, I mean Hamill's got double the odds, double, double. And he's got three wins, most in the NASCAR uh, this season. And Blaney's and almost triple. Double. Yeah, and he's arguably the two hottest drivers, and they just go. So yeah, I agree with that. I think they use name recognition, which is good for us. The Absolutely, ones that know how. Yes, um, I hope it stays that way. I, I would be. It would take me a while, but I want to go back and look that what were Hamlin's odds for that race weekend that he's won. I mean, I can't remember him winning a race where he's been like four to one no. or five to one. It seems like seems like he's always eight to one, ten to one, yeah. eleven to one. I think I've winning. I don't know how many times I hit him this year out of his wins, his three wins, but I'm pretty sure his odds were pretty good. And yeah. uh, and look, I it's not a coincidence that I've got four straight wins on the year. My my uh, I'm now at plus 300. I haven't been plus 300 in NASCAR in like over two <laughs> years. That's how difficult it is to make money in it NASCAR. Yep. But the reason is, is because of there's no practice, no qualifying deal. It's making yep. wagering so much better that you have more opportunities for, for drivers that don't know. So instead of Kyle winning, if this was normal year, Kyle would have four wins, Truex would have three, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of deal. And we just don't have that anymore. And it's great. And it's because there's no practice in qualifying. Yeah, it's helped out. We don't have that. I mean, it was a couple of years ago, we talked about the big three, Truex, Harvick, and and Kyle won like 20 of the first 22 races. We've had the big three we, we talk about that. like every yeah. year. We talk about it's so yep. it's a different big three, but we that's what we do. We talk about the big three. Oh, who's the big three this year? There ain't no big three this year, though. I mean, now it's like no. who knows who's going to win. Arguably, every week. if it is, it's Hamlin and Blaney and, and probably <laughs> Chase Elliott. And you look at their odds, right? it's like, whoa, the big three are actually like 10 to one or longer yes. odds most weeks. So that that is playing into our hands. Um, right. Plus, I think it helps that the, 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 the new voter voters, betters that are coming in, don't know NASCAR, but they know names. And they're like, oh, I'm going to throw – I know Kyle Busch. I'll, yeah, I think he'll win. Or I know Jimmy Johnson. I know Kevin Harvick. But they may not know Chase Elliott very well or Ryan Blaney or Denny Hamlin. And like you said, it's driving the price – to our favor, so yeah, keep coming, keep keep, keep yeah, and it's it not up. like and and it's not like these drivers are just accidentally winning either. Uh, no. They have the 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 history, which is why you know if you and and this should help out our numbers as well for people to find out how could I how do I understand the wagering process of NASCAR? What's the past history of these tracks from these drivers? All the different things that we go into why we believe a driver should win a particular race. We're giving it to you every week, and but it, it's no different than what we've said in years past. It's just that now, finally, we're getting the benefit of the doubt because there's true parity in the sport. Yep. And this, you, this is the be, this is the best year I think to bet NASCAR in probably six or seven years. 
I agree. I agree. Yep. I had a year. I, I have to remember it. I saved it somewhere, but I have a year that I've specifically saved in my handicapping NASCAR history that I saved because I had so many wins. I had uh, such a good you know, budget that year. And it was unbelievable because I look at it sometimes and I can't believe I had a year like that. You just can't <laughs> have those years anymore. But maybe if no. they start changing things like this, we can go back to having a year where we can be very successful in wagering. And again, we have to have breaks and things of that nature too. Uh, Kozlowski, Logano. You took Kozlowski, but nobody took Logano. Yeah, Logano, like I said about him earlier, just no top fives um, or one top five since his win in Phoenix, which was the race before the COVID-19 break. Um, he hasn't had a top five in his last seven Pocono starts. So yeah, that's not I good. I don't trust him. Yeah. No. Uh, Kozlowski, though, he had – um, let's see, one, two, three, four, seven top tens in a row heading into Talladega. Yep. Um, proved that he had a good car at Talladega, just he was saving gas there in the end, so he dropped back and it paid off wrong for him because that caution came out. Um, so I don't put a lot of stock into that per se, but he's got six top fives in his last nine at Pocono. Um, he's got 10 top, top fives in 20 races. Yeah, half of his yeah. stuff. So, um, so yeah, I trust him this weekend. I think, uh, um, We've seen the speed out of Blaney's car. Uh, Keselowski will find it. I, I, I'm just curious, as we talk about before, or talked about before, the longer the season goes on without a contract for next year for him, uh, how when does the the awkwardness start yeah. rising over there? Um, but for now, I think he's a professional. He keep it going, and, and this is a weekend for him. Again, top twelve in owners points. He's going to start up front, so he should capitalize on that clean air. And as far as long shots, I believe uh, you and I are the only ones to take Almarola at fifty to one. Yeah. So he's probably the best long shot because he's got back to back top fives. Um, and look, he doesn't have a great history at this track, but the back to back top fives. I mean. I guess why not, right? At fifty to one. Yeah, and he's been solid. I mean, does he have a top five recently? There, no. no. He was seventh and tenth the last two spring races, three top twelves. So that tells me he's there. Um, but then he's got those two top fives. The momentum's starting to come around. Um, we know the Fords haven't had a lot of success there. So if somebody finds it, i.e., him, uh, maybe he can go to a Harvick setup, something similar. He's got a chance to start to move up uh chevy's struggled there recently too we don't know what we're gonna get out of them so yes if this is a week to gamble on him especially 50 to 1 for a guy that's got two straight top five Why not? yeah this is the time to do it yeah. uh as far as the other long shots worth mentioning by the way reddick i thought i put a little bit on reddick just because look i believe in him i put him on my fantasy team uh, he was second in 2019 in the Xfinity series. And 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 he, I don't care what happened last week, just like he was saying with Kozlowski, he is coming on Reddick. So I figure, yep. why not? Uh, it's going to be hard for a rookie to win. It always is. But this year, uh, that could be different. And uh, how about Stenhouse? Maybe nobody put any money on him, but he is coming off a second-place finish. And by the way, that was my, my most impressive Stenhouse performance I've seen at one of those tracks because he's used to being so aggressive, over aggressive, always getting everybody in trouble. And he didn't this time. He actually did a really good job and he almost pulled that one out. He almost stole that one late. Yeah. And I think this package they've got from the super speedways with the updates they just did now, uh, this is perfect. Don't touch it now. Uh, um, the, the down, I hate all the downforce on these other tracks. Cause I think yeah, it worked out. Show up. Yeah. Worked out there because of how many guys do we look like they just should have crashed and taken out half the field, but they did it. They saved it. They've had they had enough downforce to not take out half the field. Laney well, I mean, almost Stenhouse, uh, wrecked a couple yeah, of times. He, he should have wrecked early. Um, Stenhouse can push and make those moves, but not have to worry about getting somebody loose and wrecking them um, for pushing too hard. So I feel like this is the perfect package for someone like a Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Um, at Talladega and, and Daytona. Yeah. So. He'd be one to watch uh, if if, the, if it still is. Right now it is the regular season finale in Daytona. He could shake some things up by stealing a win there if he, if he runs like this. So, yeah, I mean, he's got speed, and he's shown this year um, to find it more than, than not. So, yeah, I, I'd be interested to see what he could do this weekend. And one more I want to bring up, and that's Custer. Because he's he's 150 to 1. Look, he's not going to win, but maybe fantasy-wise, you want to take him this mm -hmm. week because in the Xfinity Series – he won last year's race from the pole. 
leading 58 of 103 laps. And he was on the pole again in 2018 in the Xfinity Series, finished fifth, leading 23 laps. And he finished seventh in 2017 in the Xfinity Series, leading 14 laps. So Custer really likes Pocono. And uh, I would expect uh, this could be one of his best races. Yeah, and too, like we said, all these bigger name guys getting towards the end. And what if they want to go backwards? Yeah, right. Custer's going to take those spots. Hey, I'll I mean, take yeah, that. I'll take that top ten fantasy play. He could use these, those finishes. So yeah, I feel like he'll be hanging around the top fifteen. And if some of those guys start dropping back, he'll take it. So he's a very solid fantasy. Player. And by the way, you 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 did get three top fives uh, in your fantasy team this year, uh, this week. So yeah. um, you got you got to get a win though. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I'm lacking the win, um, but we'll see. Because this week. Eric, Eric's been gobbling up uh, wins lately. He's he's come, he's right on my butt right now uh, <laughs> after my big lead. So yeah. All right, what's going on to race review? You're going to be awfully busy this weekend. Oh yeah, yeah. I got a lot of stuff. Got a lot of preview stuff kind of coming out. Um, some driver specific stuff, and then yeah, we'll have a, a race recap Saturday when it's over, and kind of try to tie it into Sunday and and why. Some things we saw Saturday will maybe change for Sunday yeah. or maybe stay the same or get better at starting spots. So, yeah, we're going to try to tie all that in. So there'll be a lot of content this weekend for sure. It should be really interesting, especially for people like us who handicap the races, that we get to yep. see a race on Saturday and hopefully use that to our advantage when we make our picks on Sunday. So Yep. And, well, we got to also watch out for the uh, – what's that called? The Sahara – desert sand that has made it over here to the united states that's coming through uh, what here in india yeah have you not heard about this? no now what yeah the uh there's been some winds that created a bunch of sand and dust from the sahara desert that's flown across the atlantic okay and it's gonna hit like through the gulf of, it's in the gulf of mexico right now like it's like they're talking about like it's a damn hurricane it's coming through the gulf going to hit the panhandle. Uh, it was on our news here in Indy last night that it's supposed to be here on Friday and kind of go up that way. So wouldn't that be completely NASCAR in 2020 if the Sahara Desert calls Saturday's race in the Pocono Mountains to be uh, postponed? I, I, I would believe it. And, 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 that and, would be NASCAR. And Pocono, remember, Pocono every year, we always get a rain delay at Pocono. And there's chances of rain. That's my only problem again, which uh, – one of these shows we'll have to talk about, which we could spend a whole show talking about, is these damn start times. Yes. How they don't give themselves any favors. And we got a 3.30 and a 4 o'clock start for these two races this weekend. If it rains, we're not – there's no way we're going to get a run that thing at night. Then what do they do? So Because yep. there's no lights at Pocono. So we could be in a weird situation yet again. Yeah, you would think it would make sense if you're going to have back-to-back races. Maybe Saturday you start at 12. And yep. Sunday, you start at as late as you can, maybe, to just have them wide yeah. apart. Maybe well, a night race. Do they have lights at Pocono? They don't have lights. That's their problem. I, well, here's the other fact. They're, they're splitting the weekend with – so you got Arca Friday night. You have the trucks Saturday at noon, and the, or at 12.30, and then the cup after. And then Sunday's the Xfinity, and then the cup after that. Why don't they flip-flop the cup and the Xfinity yes. and, and cup and trucks to give you room? Because if an Xfinity or truck race – gets canceled or postponed nobody cares nobody's gonna no yeah the cuff's what we got to get in and by starting that late and it's a two and a half mile track that if it rains and it's in a, it's in the mountains it could rain for a while it's hard to dry you may not get a run yeah, that race and so now what's that gonna look like yeah and we've had our share of rain rains that have you mentioned busher i mean i mm-hmm. remember the i think it was uh, 2016 i, I yeah. forget the other one i had ryan newman one year and I think, and he was like, you could tell Ryan Newman was one of those races where the, Newman was, was like moving up the field, fifth, fourth, third, second. And he's like one lap away from passing. I think Jeff Gordon might have stole that race. And he's a, and you could just tell, oh, one more lap and he's going to pass him for the win. And it starts raining. Yep. yep. I just, and you know, it's I, frustrating situation. Out of all the times it's rained and in, in shortened these races, I could possibly remember maybe one time I got a win. Maybe. I don't think I've ever. I, nothing more than that. It seems like I get screwed no. every time it rains. Same here. Because it, it's hard to predict. It's usually somebody that's probably not supposed to be yeah. there when it rains. Yes. And that's. Pocono's known for that. So I wouldn't be shocked if somehow we got that this weekend. 
All right. Well, subscribe to our channel and you'll be able to get alerts whenever our shows are available here on the Prime Sports Network, including Prime Sports NASCAR. Check out racereviewonline.com for Eric. And when he, by the way, last thing, when are you heading back out? Do, have they said anything? Nothing yet. It doesn't look like Indy's uh, going to have much more people. Um, so right now I'm heading Bristol. back out for Bristol. Yep. So we'll see if anything but happens. You haven't found out I whether the media is available at Bristol yet. I have not yet. They're still working on the protocol. They said. Right. So we'll see. Hopefully we'll be able no to. No matter get... what, I'll be there. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully I'll be able to get out there too. If, yeah, exactly. If, uh... Worst case, I'll, I'll do something from the stands. I'll have my stuff with me. So uh, <laughs> who knows? Can't wait. Excellent. Thanks, Eric. Thank you.